Hello, welcome back to Planet 40k. Today we've got a different kind of video for you, a different kind of vibe. Now, I went to a tournament just over the weekend. It was run by Idic Beer 40k, Necrons and more. I'm sure you guys know who that is, but if you don't, there'll be a link down in the description below. It's another Necron channel where he's doing tactics, list builds, and it goes live every month as well. So he hosted an event over the weekend, and yeah, it was 10 people that came to the tournament, invite only kind of job. So it was YouTubers, it was a Twitch streamer, I'm pretty sure they'll all be on TikTok and Instagram as well, but there were 10 people and throughout this video I'm going to kind of talk about them. But the tournament itself, it was a 1000 point list tournament. Now we did only plan to play 3 games, but time got cut short, so we had to kind of convert that to 2 games. But I still got my 2 games in and I actually played 2 pretty big deals. So we're going to get onto that in a bit. So let me just give you a little list of who was actually at that tournament. So of course I was there, Idik Beer was of course there, he was the host of the actual tournament itself. There were CM War games, there was Darren from Twisted Dice. There was 6 plus Stevo, Voldemort's Guide to Warhammer, that's the voice of 40k right there. Black Toad Studio was there, Big Mech Dan Skull, Let's Make It Orky, who's a Twitch streamer. She's also got a YouTube channel as well. And finally there was the Pickle Jar, who's got his own painting YouTube channel. So I just want to shout those guys out. All of their links and handles will be down in the description below. So if you want to do me a massive favour and be a hero, subscribe to all nine of those people. They're really good people. But now let's talk about the 1000 point list that I actually took. Now before actually explaining what was in my 1000 point list, I've got to explain that it was on quite short notice. I was re-invited to it because I actually declined it at first. I was re-invited to it on Thursday and then on the Saturday was actually the tournament. And I was actually away visiting family as well, so I had to kind of abandon that trip, come home, get my stuff, get to Portsmouth where Nick's located and have a list ready. So I was playing around with a lot of different lists. Had a bit of a sleepless night on a Thursday because I just simply couldn't find the list that would suit what I wanted to do. So then I thought, who is actually going to be playing in this tournament? So I knew for a fact there's going to be at least three Orc players, possibly even four. I knew there was going to be at least three Necron players, including myself, so two other Necron players. And then I knew that there was going to be some sort of Space Marine kind of factions within this 10-person tournament. So I was kind of worried about bringing warriors. I didn't want to bring warrior blobs going up against those speedy orc factions. So I kind of threw them out the window. It wasn't going to be a warrior blob day with this 1,000 point list. Now there were a few restrictions to building this list. It was a 1,000 point list, but also it could only take a patrol detachment. So there was no Silent King involved, which kind of sucks because when me and Nick were creating our 1000 point list a few months back. Mine did actually involve the Silent King, so I couldn't use that list either. So yeah, I had to make something on the spot, and I thought, you know what, I don't have much time, I'm just gonna throw in the Nightbringer. Now I had to, <laughs> now I had to message Nick to ask him if that was okay, because I thought maybe it was a bit of a dick move, but he said it's fine, maybe there's even another player bringing a Nightbringer. So I said, yeah, we're gonna be bringing the Nightbringer today. So we took the Nightbringer, what else did we have in the list? We had, took one Overlord on foot, he had the War Scythe and the Veil of Darkness Relic. We had three units of five man immortals and I went with the Tesla options as opposed to the Gorse Blasters. I took two units of five Scarab Swarms just to help me score some sort of victory points. Of course I had the Nightbringer. And then my final big and bulky unit was eight Lich Guard. Now they took the Sword and Shield option. Now going up against Orcs in particular, that's the ones that I was really worried about. So I thought if I'm going to have a fight I may as well get our best kind of tanky fighting units which are I think the Lich Guard. Two plus armor save with a 4 plus invulnerable save with the shields, that's what I was relying on. Now as for the dynasty itself, I went with the Relentlessly Expansionist along with the Eternal Conqueror, so I had objectives secured. Now the 6 cents pre-game kind of thing didn't really help me that much in either of the games to be honest with you, but I'll get onto that in a minute. So how did my first YouTube tournament go? Well, we only had two games as mentioned in the intro, it wasn't three unfortunately. But the first game I was drawn up against Voldemort's Guide to Warhammer, and he's an absolute character let me tell you. Yeah, he's a really good guy, quite an enjoyable match. And now he was bringing the Blood Angels to the table. So at first I thought, that's not too bad for the Nightbringer because they're mainly a melee based faction. If they're only going to be doing damage in the fight phase, then the Nightbringer is going to have his way. So I kind of forgot in the game that Mephiston was actually a librarian, which is kind of stupid in hindsight because he's the chief librarian. So I threw the Nightbringer straight out the front without a screen, took out an Assault Intercessor unit, Wiped the floor with those, but then yeah, Mephiston come in, turn two, got three wounds with the smite, a few other units on the table, done a few shooting attacks, took three more wounds off the Nightbringer, and then of course Mephiston come in, absolutely annihilated my Nightbringer, and he actually scored 15 points from it from the Blood Angels secondary objective, which was a real bad start for me, giving away my Nightbringer and 15 points. But throughout the game I kept scoring quite a lot of points with Treasures of Aeons, of ancient machineries, my scarabs were literally holding fort, the Lich Guard did pretty well as well. Now I didn't get table, but I had one single scarab unit left on the table by turn 5. 
Well, I seem to have slaughtered all of the Xenos scum, but unfortunately I think I'm still going to lose on points. Ah, interesting. And you're up against Planets 40k himself with his Necrons. Let me get the score up. Let me, I can't remember what the score was exactly. So I had 66 and he had 53. So it was a very tight game. And to be honest, I probably shouldn't have won it because I think he forgot one of his secondary objectives, the warp ritual he had. He didn't bother with it the whole game. I think if he did go for it, it would have been a lot tighter than it already was. But yeah, a really enjoyable game. And that got me my first win, I guess. Then we went on to the second game. And this is where it went a little bit downhill because I hadn't eaten that day. It was quite a hot day. I think it was about 34 degrees in the UK. That's pretty hot. And I ended up getting a migraine. But we're in the tournament. We're in the game. We have to crack on. Doesn't matter if you've got a migraine or not. I'm playing Darren from Twisted Dice. That's an opportunity in itself. I wanted to crack on with the game. Now he brought World Eaters, which in theory, I should have absolutely wiped the floor with him. And I think a few of the other guys around the table were saying, yeah, you should win this, no problem. That put the pressure on even more. But even from deployment, mistakes were made. In fact, I didn't even deploy one of my units and I only realised around turn two or turn three and we just had to agree that that unit was destroyed. We couldn't really bring them on mid-game. I suppose in hindsight, we could have maybe used them as strategic reserves and taken away some command points or something, but I was so annoyed at myself that I said, nope, they're destroyed, but get rid of them. Um, my deployment itself was pretty terrible. I deployed the Nightbringer to the side. Because of the previous game, when I lost it so quickly, I was a little bit edgy with it, but going up against a proper melee faction, I should have just put it at the front and centre. He had a Demon Prince, but it was a larger, modified, it was almost like a Bloodthirster type of size, but it was a Demon Prince. I should have been going for that straight away, but no, I was kind of cowered him to the side, scarabbed in front of the Nightbringer with a screen. So yeah, bad deployment. Very bad deployment, in fact, if you're leaving units off the table. And throughout the game, I just kept making real rookie mistakes, which, again, I'm going to blame the migraine a little bit. I'm doing real silly things. Like, for example, not activating one of my defending units in combat. For some reason, I thought, my, well, my Lich Guard, I had an 8-man Lich Guard unit, as you've already heard me say earlier. They were not charged in that charge phase, but for some reason, I thought they were charged. So when it came to my turn to activate some of the fights that are already ongoing, I didn't choose them. I just chose the nearest unit to me, which was an Overlord, because I thought he's fought with everything. So I did my Overlord. Took out, I think it was a Corn Berserker unit or maybe just a Chaos Space Marine unit. I can't remember what they were now. And then it down just turns to me and goes, right, I'm going to activate my Possessed. And my eyes went like, oh, okay. I thought they've already fought. Nope, they haven't fought already. So I lost pretty much eight Lich Guard just like that. That pretty much summed the game up. But the moment there alone was pretty much curtains. Now the score in that game, I only scored 43. That wasn't a bad attempt to be honest, considering that I did pretty badly. But he did score 84 and yeah. He did pretty well. He was actually really on it with his actual tactics. They were spot on. And even after the game, he was going back saying, what could I have done better? What could I have done better? So yeah, Darren from Twisted Dice is a, he's a pretty good player. Looking forward to playing him again, in fact. So yeah, that was my first experience of a YouTube sort of event. I believe I came 6th out, out of 10 in the event overall. I probably, if I won that game, which I, part of me feels like I should have or could have, I think I would have been second place. I couldn't have got first place. I'll let you guys watch Nick's video because in Nick's video, he's probably going to show the results from top to bottom. So yeah, I don't want to spoil that, but but it wasn't me who won. So yeah. But yeah, I just thought I'd share this video with you guys. This isn't your usual tactics video. It's more for the hardcore following. And also we owe it to the rest of the guys that are at the tournament. So yeah, if you could kindly subscribe to all nine of those people, all of their links would be down in the description below. And also a special shout out to Nick for putting on the event. It was a really top tier event. Pretty much done it outside of his apartment. But yeah, he put everything on. He filled up the fridge, all the snacks were there. Yeah, Nick put on a really good display. So yeah, that's all I've got for you today. In the next video, I believe we're going to be doing an anti-horde video, which should have been coming out today, but I just wanted to get this video out there first. Guys, if you're still here watching this, then yeah, you are the hardcore following. Massive thanks to you guys, and yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.